There's a hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, where it's said that there are guests who checked in, but who could never leave. The Crescent Hotel, a mountaintop resort in the Ozarks, is famously known as America's most haunted hotel, with many claiming that the seven-story Victorian resort is the site of hundreds of nerve-shattering encounters with the supernatural. The sound of squeaky wheels from a hospital gurney are heard early in the morning on the third floor, and sightings of a nurse wheeling a corpse down a long hallway, then evaporating into nothing. Or the sight of a group of small children huddled in fear under an autopsy table in the hotel's morgue, crying out for help. According to some psychic investigators, the space right above the hotel morgue is said to be a portal to the other side. Built in 1886 on a mountaintop in Northwest Arkansas, the Crescent Hotel and Spa was originally conceived as a retreat for the rich and famous of its day. But it seemed marked with the spirit of tragedy from the start. According to recent reports, room 218 is still haunted by the presence of an Irish stonemason named Michael. Michael worked on the construction of the hotel back in 1886, until he tragically fell to his death. In the following decades, the Grand Hotel was poorly managed and was allowed to deteriorate. A rebirth came in 1908, when it reopened as a college and conservatory for young women. But it closed again in 1924, and then reopened again in 1930, this time as a junior college. But the new school only lasted four years before it was shut down. The Crescent Hotel was then leased as a summer hotel in the mid-1930s until it came into the possession of its most notorious owner, Norman G. Baker, in 1937. He converted the hotel into a hospital and fitness resort. Baker became a millionaire as an inventor and a radio personality promoting his ideas about health with the authority of a doctor. He saw himself as a medical pioneer, even though he had no professional training at all. Based in Muscatine, Iowa, Baker attacked the medical establishment as being corrupt and profit-driven. He claimed to have found cures for multiple diseases, including cancer, and he set up his own cancer clinic. Legend says his office was filled with bottles of his so-called curing potions none of them legitimately tested, and jars containing specimens of his patient's flesh and body parts. Baker even made movies of himself, promoting his own clinic. But many of his patients allegedly died under his care, and the medical establishment soon ran him out of Iowa for practicing medicine without a license. Baker moved his cancer ward down to Arkansas and occupied the Crescent Hotel building. There, he set up a health resort, that primarily pushed the curative powers of the local natural spring water. In 1940, he was convicted of mail fraud and sentenced to serve four years in prison. The Crescent Hotel shut down for some time and had no real owner until a group of investors bought it in 1946. But again, the building fell into disrepair and was haunted by tragedy. In 1967, The only resident still living there was one of the aged investors, and that year, the hotel almost burned down. To this day, many of the rooms of the Crescent have their own story and their own spirits. Outside room 416, a deceased cancer patient named Theodora has been seen at the door, rummaging for her keys, or inside the room cleaning the place up for visitors. Room 212, is the site of the most frequently seen entity at the Crescent, the pipe-smoking visage of Dr. John Fremont Ellis, who was the hotel's in-residence physician during its early years. People report they can smell his cherry tobacco wafting through the air. The ghost of a four-year-old child named Brecky, who died of complications arising from appendicitis, is sometimes observed bouncing a ball throughout the hotel. Even Morris, the hotel cat, has been spotted on the property. 
Morris became locally famous for living at the hotel for 21 years and was unofficially dubbed the hotel general manager. Morris is now buried on the estate and his spirit is frequently sighted around the building. In 1997, Marty and Elise Roenick bought the hotel for $1.3 million and oversaw a six-year renovation project. But almost immediately, reports of strange sightings emerged, and the Roenicks brought in a certified psychic medium to get a reading on the hotel. The investigators sensed there was a space in the building where there's a portal to the other side, what they call a dimension that holds the spirits of the dead. These spirits can be reached, so we're told, on the same frequency as other ghosts. The Baker Morgue is now a favored site for paranormal sightings and activity. A dark, mysterious figure has been seen inside, and visitors report strange cold spots or the sensation of being touched despite no one else being there. Guests at the Crescent often experience fainting spells, usually in the same location. Their faces suddenly grow pale as blood drains away and they pass out. They recover quickly, but there's no explanation as to why they lose consciousness. As many as 5,000 visitors have seen or experienced some form of mystical activity here. It's believed that the dark spirit of Baker's Nightmare Clinic still grips the structure. Past mental, physical, and emotional agony infests its very walls. The building's base is constructed out of 18-inch blocks of limestone drawn from Crescent Mountain, the Ozark summit on which it was built. And paranormal experts believe this could be one of the reasons for the high number of psychic events. Many believe limestone is capable of absorbing the electromagnetic energy of the extreme emotions generated by Baker's Chamber of Horrors. The building underwent a major renovation in 2000, and for a long time, many of the terrors of Norman Baker's clinic were unverified. It wasn't until the last few years that solid evidence of these ghastly rumors emerged, including some of the grotesque bottles of elixir and flesh he was said to store in his lab. Paranormal investigators, including the ghost hunters, have explored the hotel and come away with the belief that there is something unearthly happening here. Seances are often held here to reach out to the tortured spirits that still infest the building. Annual conventions of psychic and paranormal explorers meet and perform their own investigations. In 2021, a full-body apparition was caught on film by an amateur sleuth using a laser scanner in the dark. Elsewhere, a figure has frequently been seen seated on the windowsill of the crystal dining room, as if waiting for someone who never came. Today, the general public can see preserved remnants of the hotel's jarring past. There are night tours of the hotel's haunted grounds, and many of Baker's creepy specimen jars are now on display in the hotel's morgue, chilling proof of the Crescent's nightmare history. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans creating documentary style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, and give this video a like. And to be notified when we post new videos, hit that notification bell. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and for exclusive merchandise, visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. And for those that wish to support our channel, please visit Mystery Syndicate on Patreon. We have a variety of new patron tiers with tons of great benefits. If you want to see your name on a future video, be sure to check it out. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.